Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Top 10 DaVinci Resolve Tutorials of the Week. We're gonna jump right in with number 10 through number 2. It's everyone else. Once again, great showing from everyone else this week, but it's that time again for our number 1 DaVinci Resolve Tutorial of the Week. This one. Let me show you how to create your own 3D Top 10 countdown graphics like the ones you just saw. As always, we're starting here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. I've already created a new composition that is 1080 60 frames per second. And I'm going to drag the fusion composition from the effects library onto my timeline. And I'm going to right click, go to change clip duration and change that from the default five seconds to 11 seconds. With that stretched out, we can click this icon on the bottom to open the fusion page. And we're going to start by adding a text 3D node to our scene. Our scene is going to start by counting down. So in style text, I'm just going to type 10 and pull that up in my preview. The thing that sets 2D text apart from 3D text is extrusion. It's giving that text depth in Z space. So with that 3D text node selected, I'm going to make sure my inspector is open and scroll down to where I see extrusion. I'm going to open that and set the extrusion depth to 0 0.06. If we pivot around in our scene, we will see that the text now has some depth. But you'll also see that this text right now is a flat white. And while there are tons of options in Fusion for adding materials and texturing this text, we are going to add a replace material 3D node. And then we're going to open our effects library in Fusion, go to templates, shaders, and drag a cool metal into our workspace and pipe that into the replace material node. If we preview that, you will see it looks a little bit different, but you'll really see what happens once we get further into our 3D scene. Now we need to build the 3D scene that this text will live inside of. With this replace material node selected, I'm gonna come up here to our quick access toolbar, click this merge 3D node, this camera 3D node, and a spotlight node, and then finally a renderer 3D node. And that renderer, we can immediately pipe to our media out. In the media out, you won't see anything right now, and that is because we have to position these assets in 3D space. Let's select that Merge 3D node and pull it up in our first viewer, and then you'll be able to see the different 3D elements we have in this scene. So if I select that 3D camera, I now have these position controls, and if I pull that 3D camera back in 3D space, you'll start to see that now in our media out, we're seeing just the bottom half of that 10. And I'll also grab that Spotlight node, Pull that back to the side a little bit. Select this control to access our rotation options and rotate that angle so it's facing our text. And then we'll jump over to our renderer 3D node and turn on lighting and shadows. Now we'll finally address only seeing half this text. So we'll grab that 3D text node, move over to layout and change this center Y option and just drag this down until that text is centered in our scene. To transition between the numbers in our scene, we are going to be using the rotation of this 3D text. So if I go to layout in this 3D text, open rotation, and change this Y rotation to 90, you'll see that you are looking square at the end of the text. But to demonstrate something really important, I'm going to right click in this viewer, go to guides and select show guides. Now if you look here, you'll see that the exact center of our screen is on one edge of our text. And that is because when you add extrusion to a text, it extrudes forward in space. So because I'm at 90 degrees, it's moving to this right of center. And if I were to change this to negative 90 degrees, you would see that the entire text is now to the left of center. We have to address this because we want the transition point in our scene to be at that 90 degree angle. When you look at our 3D text from the side, it will be very easy to cut from one to the next because there won't be too many distinguishing markers. And to make sure that we're always showing our text from the front correctly, we're gonna be jumping back and forth between 90 and negative 90. So we need to address this effect where our text is not rotating correctly from the center. And to that, we are going to open up the shading controls, scroll down to position, and we are gonna change this offset Z data. Now we're gonna change this offset to half of whatever our extrusion depth was. Our extrusion depth for this text was 0.06, so we need to change this offset to negative 0.03. So if we go back to our layout options here and jump from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees, you'll see that you're looking at the other side of the text, but that it's staying perfectly centered. So we're gonna take our playhead, go to the beginning of our scene, and set a keyframe here at 90. Then we can go forward to 60 frames or exactly one second forward in our timeline, set another keyframe and change that to negative 90. And now we get to use a tool on the spline editor that I am very excited about and will make this entire process so much easier. 
With that 3D text selected, I'm gonna open the spline tool, make sure that Y rotation is enabled and click this button to zoom to fit. Here we have a visual representation of that rotation on the Y axis. So I'm gonna select both of those keys come down here on the bottom and click set loop. If we zoom out now, you'll see that every second this text will rotate. And when it gets to the end of that rotation, it will instantly jump back to the other side. If I didn't have this loop and I was just continuing on rotating, you would see the text backwards and it wouldn't work. But if I were to preview this motion, you would see that this loop is happening at a perfectly linear rate. Our text is rotating at the same speed all of the time. We wanna change this to give our text a little ease. When we're transitioning, we want the old number to whip out, the new number to whip in, and then we want each number to slow down a bit when it's facing exactly center. Here's what we're gonna do. With our two keyframes selected, you'll see that we have these little handles. These are our easing options. These are extremely powerful. Most of the time, you want to ease in and out of motion. When something starts to move, you want it to move slowly and then get going. We are going to inverse that a bit. In this spline editor, the steepness of this curve represents the speed. I'm gonna grab this handle on our first keyframe, stretch it out, and pull it straight down so it ends right about this negative 75 degree marker. Then I'm gonna pull our second marker, pull it straight up, and let it sit right at that plus 75 marker. And if we preview this now, you'll see that we have a really snappy motion where the text almost comes to a complete rest before whipping out and the next number appearing. Now that we have this motion we like, we can move on and actually change the text that appears. We're gonna make sure our 3D text is selected, go back here to text, and I'm gonna set a keyframe right at zero for this 10. Then on 60, I'm gonna change this to nine and it will automatically set another keyframe. There are some options available to automate this, but doing it manually won't take that long and will really give us a lot of flexibility. To make sure we perfectly line up transitions, I'm gonna zoom out and make sure we can see both our styled text controls and our Y axis rotation controls. So I can slide forward in my spline viewer until I get exactly on that next 90 degree point and change that to eight and so on for the rest of our timeline. And now we'll see why I made this composition 11 seconds. After the one shows and then transitions out, we have a second of space that we can add any custom message we want to. So I'm just gonna select the style text and type in neat. And then if we scrub at any time in that next second, you'll see that it rotates. Now this is very large in frame and that's because we haven't changed our camera position. I'm gonna navigate back to the beginning of our timeline, go into our camera, come to transform and set a keyframe on this Z translation control. Then I'm gonna to go to get the very end of my timeline and I'm actually gonna push forward on that Z until that is quite a bit smaller in frame. And to check on this animation, I'm gonna jump back to the edit page and let it render. This looks pretty good. There are a few things we're gonna jump back and address, but that main motion of that quick snappy rotation we have down. And we have a pretty engaging countdown, 10 down to one with a special message at the end. The big thing we need to fix is that our 3D light, which is lighting our text as it pushes back, does not cover the entirety of our neat. So let's jump back in, change that spotlight control. We can increase the cone angle just a bit, increase the penumbra angle, so it softens at the edge, and then you'll see that the light isn't even really hitting center. So with that spotlight selected, I'm going to change back to this move control and shift it a little bit over to the right and pull it a little further back in Z space. And maybe increase the angle a little more again so we have that as an angle and find a happy medium we like. The other thing we're gonna do is open this renderer 3D node navigate over to settings and toggle on motion blur. And I'm gonna increase this quality to six. Now, if we preview over any of these real snappy transitions, you'll see that the text, as it starts to rotate out, we'll get some really nice natural motion blur that really helps sell that whipping effect. I'll preview this once more in the edit page. And using an advanced feature like this motion blur will make it take a little bit longer to render and preview, but I think it's worth it. It looks pretty cool. 
I'm really liking how this is looking. It's snappy, it's engaging, it's a simple design, but it still manages to be a little bit flashy. The big reason I'm excited for this video, this tutorial, is that I think it can open a lot of doors for new creators. There's a reason top 10 lists are so popular. They keep the viewer engaged, they're interesting, and they can be a great way to build a community around you in whatever you're interested in. You could create a top 10 countdown of your stream clips for the past week, or you could have your audience sending clips to create a community countdown. Or you could use the concepts in this video to add 3D text to any of your existing content. As always, thank you for watching. If you use this video to create 3D text or a countdown like this for any of your content, I would love to see it. Please send me a link. And as always, if you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. I'll see you next time.